So the last few videos looked at audio signals in terms of sampling and quantizing. Let's do something very similar now for some images. Now we're not going to be able to get into all the details of image processing and how images are represented and filtered and things like that. This is definitely going to be more of just kind of showing some examples and kind of talking about the parallels of image processing with respect to what you know about signal processing. But I think it'll still be interesting even though we won't be able to get into all the image processing details. So here's our starting image. The original image is a 368 by 512 image. So there are 368 rows, 512 columns. And this particular image is what we call a grayscale image because every pixel is some shade of gray. So this is our starting point. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna talk about sampling. So just like with the audio signal, we downsampled and then reconstructed, we're gonna do something similar here. Starting with our original 368 by 512 image, we are going to downsample. So when I downsample, I'm gonna make it easy. I have an even number of pixels. I'm gonna downsample the number of rows and columns by two. So if I downsample, I have half the pixels now. I only have 184 rows and only 256 columns. Now what I've done is I've kind of zoomed in on the image. The image actually got smaller in terms of pixels. I've kind of zoomed in so we can actually see it. And only by downsampling by two, this image I would say still looks fairly similar to the image that we started with. What we're gonna do in the next couple charts is we're gonna continue downsampling. So the number of pixels is gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller, just like we did for downsampling our audio signal. And then we're going to reconstruct the original image. So we're gonna go back to our full 300 and 368 by 512 image from the downsampled image. So it's all about um, taking this downsampled signal, in this case the signal is an image, and going back to where we started to end up with an image that's the exact same size, but just like before, the downsampling process has removed information. So we're not able to perfectly reconstruct the image and we'll see what happens. So this is our 184 by 256 image. Do it in half again. We have half the pixels. Again, I'm zooming in a lot here so you can still see the image. That's why this title is so large. So it still looks like the same image. It's still an ocean or a lake and a boat and these you know, mountains in the background and a dock. So it still looks the same, but you can see what's starting to happen. It's starting to look kind of pixelated. If I go even more, you know, now the person on the boat, you can barely even see them, right? So that's 46 by 64. So I'm definitely losing information here as I down sample image. And then finally, kind of the worst case that we'll look at in terms of how much, how many samples I've removed. This is our 23 by 32 image. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these down sampled images and we're gonna reconstruct them. So let's do that. So this right here is back to our original image size. So our original image size had 512 columns and 368 rows. So this is our reconstructed image. So it has the correct number of rows and columns as our original image. But the way that I got this image was by reconstructing the down sampled by two image. So when I look at this, you know, honestly, without toggling back and forth, I really can't tell the difference. This looks like a really nice image. I can still see the person on the boat. I can see these nice little details in the water here. I can see the details on the dock. It still looks pretty good. Can't really tell too much that anything has changed by downsampling and the reconstructing. Let's look at the next one. This one's starting to look a little more interesting. This is the one that was downsampled by a factor of four. So it had four times fewer rows, four times fewer columns, so that's four times four is 16. That's 16 times fewer pixels. When I reconstruct this, now I'm starting to see some differences. This reconstructed image, which has the original size as our starting image, but it's missing some information, does not look as good as the original image. It's starting to look kind of blurred, and I'm definitely losing some features here, losing some features here. If I go to this one, now it's even more pronounced. This was the downsampled by eight image. So now I've lost a ton of information. Similar things are happening here in terms of what happened with the audio signal. If you remember with the audio signal, as we downsampled, we were losing samples and we were basically removing high frequency content. The exact same thing is happening here, except we have to think of frequencies a little different. We're talking about spatial frequencies. In image processing, high frequency components refer to sharp transitions between pixels. So I'm able to see sharp edges on docks, 
sharp, crisp features in the ocean, crisp lines that distinguish the boat from the water. As I downsample, I'm throwing away that high frequency information. When I reconstruct the image, those crisp features are gone and my image starts to look blurry. Blurry things in photos refer to low frequencies. The transition from, say, clouds to this blob here is now kind of blurred out because I only have low frequencies in the image to do or represent that information. The blurring becomes even more pronounced if I go to my final example. This was the downsampled by um, 16. So now I've thrown away a ton of high frequency information. All I have is very low frequencies. So I'm only able to transition between water and boat very smoothly, which is why these edges are just completely gone now. And now this image is basically almost unrecognizable from the starting image. All right, so that's the end of this little example in terms of sampling and reconstructing for images. We were able to cover all the theory of how you actually do that for images, but many of the trends that we saw for this kind of experiment were very similar to what we saw for audio signals that we do understand very well. Downsampling removes information. When I remove that information, I'm gonna use an anti-aliasing filter to get rid of the high frequency components. So when I reconstruct, I don't have aliasing occur. The consequence of that means I'm throwing away high frequency components, which means my images start to look blurry when I reconstruct them from a downsampled image. In the next video, we will look at image quantization.